Story of Leonardo Fibonacci Blockhead The Life of Fibonacci Joseph Diagnis Illustrated by Chan O. Graham You can call me Blockhead Everyone else does One day When I was just a boy Maestro wrote out a math problem and gave us 10 minutes to solve it. I solved it in 2 seconds. That's the way I am with numbers. I have loved them since I was very little. Everywhere I look in my parents' home, there was something to count. That day in class, the other student did their math on abacuses and wrote out their answers in Roman numerals. It was time consuming, but that's how we did our math back then. As I waited for them to finish, I got bored. I counted 12 birds in the trees outside. How many legs did all those birds have? I wondered. How many eyes? How many wings? And if each bird sang for two seconds, one bird after other, how long would it take for them to sing? These were such beautiful questions that I started daydreaming. Leonardo, cried Maestro, how dare you daydream in my class? But sir, I said, I was thinking. Aha! Maestro cried. There's the trouble. There will be no thinking in this classroom, only working. You're nothing but an absent minded, lazy daydream. You, you blockhead. The other kids laughed. Blockhead, blockhead. They cried. I was so sad and ran out of school and into the street of Pisa. I let the noise of the city shallow so swallow me up. What a wonderful place of city it was. The year was 1178 and Pisa was one of the greatest city in all of Italy. In the churchyard, workers were building a new bell tower. Something had gone seriously wrong with the builder's map. All around me, I saw and heard the glory of numbers. So many people were using math in their work. My head was swimming. I was so excited and I didn't watch where I was going. Stop dreaming! A lady cried. What are you? A blockhead? That night, my father was angry. The whole city is talking. He yelled. Everyone says my son is an idiot. They call you blockhead. I can have that. Perhaps you are being too hard on the boy, Signor Bonasio, said my father's advisor, Alfredo. Silence, cried the father. Leonardo, soon you will leave with me for Africa. That will put an end to these nicknames. I'll make a merchant of you yet. Yuck, I thought. Who wants to be a merchant? The night before we sailed, I couldn't sleep. I watched sadly as a shooting star fell into the ocean. In the, in the star's light, I saw an old friend. He waited for me to dry my tears. 
I think people are happiest when they know what pleases them, said Alfredo. Me? I love cheese. And you, Maestro Leonardo? What makes you happiest? Numbers, I said without thinking. Then you should learn all you can about them. That way you will always be happy. I decided to take Alfredo's advice. My father took me to live in a city called Bugia in the northern Africa. In my new home, I noticed that Arabs, Arab merchants didn't use Roman numerals. They used numerals they had borrowed from the Hindu people in India. Back home, we wrote this X, V, I, I, I. Here, the merchant threw this 18. See how much easier it is? I wanted so much to learn these numerals. By day, I did my father's accounts. At night, Alfredo went with me as I learned the strangest new numerals. When I got older, my father sometimes sent me on the business trips. When I was in working, I sought out wise men in every city. In Egypt, I learned how the ancient pharaohs and their subjects had used fractions. I measured my ways through Istanbul, Turkey, and Damascus, Syria. In Greece, I learned about geometry from the ancient books of math. In Sicily, I put my divisions and subtraction skills to good use. In France, well, in France, I ate fish soup. One day, I began to write a book about Hindu Arabic numerals. I tossed some riddles into it, like this one. There was a man who put two baby rabbits in a field. It takes rabbits one month to grow up and be ready to have babies. And it takes them one more month to give birth to a pair of baby rabbits. Every month, a pair of grown-up rabbits give birth to a new pair of rabbits. How many pairs of rabbits will the man have at the end of the year? Alfredo tried to solve it, but he couldn't. Then, I showed him how to solve the problem. On the very first day, you'd have one pair of baby rabbits. At the end of one month, you'd have one pair of all grown up ready to have babies. End of month two, one grown up pair, one baby pair. End of month three, two grown up pairs, one baby pair. End of four or month four, three grown-up pairs, two baby pairs. End of month five, five grown-up pairs, three baby pairs. Then I notice that you don't even have to write out the whole problem. If you add any two consecutive numbers in the pattern, you'd get the next number. One pair plus one pair equivalent to two pairs. One pair plus one pair equivalent to three pairs. Two pairs plus three pairs is equivalent to five pairs. Here are the first few numbers of the pattern. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five, eighty-nine, one hundred forty-four, two hundred thirty-three, three hundred seventy-seven. If you don't watch out you have 233 pairs of rabbit in a year. News of my work reached Frederick II, ruler of the Holy Roman Empire. When I visited his palace, 
his wise men challenged me with a bunch of really hard math problems. But I solved them in no time. This Leonardo is one smart cookie, said Frederick. Everyone laughed. After all, he was the emperor. I felt proud of my accomplishments, but one day, when I was back in Pisa, I overheard some people talking in the marketplace. That's the son of Bonasso, said a man. He's the one who says we should use those numerals from India. What's wrong with the old numerals? Asked another. If they were good enough for the Romans, they're good enough for me. What a blackhead! Suddenly, I was sad again. What good is all my work if people don't listen, I thought. People will always remember me as a blackhead. I wonder what my old friend Alfredo would have said. Suddenly, it was as if he were there with me. Don't listen to these fools, Leonardo, roared Alfredo. Aren't these numbers of yours very important? I certainly think so, I said. Someday, Hindu Arabic numerals will be known all over the world. Why? The more I studied, the more I study them, the more amazed I am by them. With that, I pointed to a flower on the beach. How many petals does this flower have? Alfredo counted and answered, Twenty-one. And this flower? Thirteen. He replied, So what? But I didn't but I did not reply quickly. Instead, we walk along the beach all night counting things. We counted three petal flowers, five petal flowers, and eight petal flowers. We counted to five or the arms of a starfish and inside an apple. See, Alfredo? I said, in everything that I count, everywhere that I look, I keep finding the same numbers. Do you recognize them? Alfredo recited them aloud. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five. My goodness, he cried. They are the numbers from your rabbit problem. Exactly, I said. And we're just getting started. Lately, I've been thinking about this, those numbers differently. Watch. In the sand, I drew one tiny square and one more tiny square next to it. Next came a shape two squares high and two squares wide. Then three by three squares shape. Then five by five squares shape. And eight by eight squares shape. And a thirteen by thirteen square shape. I could go on and on, I said, but it just wouldn't look right unless I connected them like this. Can you guess what I drew inside them, Alfredo? Sure couldn't. A spiral, I shouted. You can make a spiral with my numbers. How magnificent, said Alfredo. Yes, it is, I said. 
But I still don't understand why these numbers are so special. Don't you see, Leonardo? said Alfredo. These are the numbers Mother Nature uses to the order to order the universe. She had hidden them in many places, and until now, no one has found her secret. Alfredo's words fill my heart with joy. All my life, people had called me blackhead because I daydream about numbers. But how could that be bad? Mother Nature loved numbers too. Alfredo was delighted. From the tiniest plant to the prettiest pine cone, from the tallest flower to the wittiest wave, to the most wondrous far-off galaxy, all this are home to your numbers, Leonardo. I am old now, but numbers still make me happy. In all my years, I have never told anyone the secret I shared with Alfredo that night. But now, I have told you, look through this book again and you will find my numbers, just as they are in real life. Now, you see why I think mine called 